Okay, welcome back to another Let's Play brought to you by Podcast 17 and Planet Philip. We're playing Surface Tension. This is uh, episode 3 of Surface Tension. Kind of a long one, sorry guys, but uh, this is the best way I can think of breaking it up in terms of these little sections. Um, immediately, we're going to see a new thing. Let's start of this. That right there is the manta ray. Take note of its two tails that it's got. I don't know if you saw it. And there's a, a jet sort of chasing that right talk real quick about the manta ray it's called the manta ray for one reason alone in the uh the prime strategy guide for half-life one it was nicknamed the manta ray because you know it looked it looked sort of like a man manta ray um other other half-life fans call it the alien aircraft which is another good uh another good name for it but i like manta ray a little bit better there's actually two types and a lot of people don't don't recognize this there's one with two tails and one with one tail the two-tail manta rays are troop transports, like we saw with this one, um, where it dropped off the uh, the alien grunt and the alien slave over there. They just sort of drop down. Um, the one-tail manta rays are, um, they shoot like a bright orange beam on the bottom of it. We'll see it a lot in interlopers and in the zen area of Half-Life 1. Um, and, uh, and they really just do massive destruction. And again, in, in Opposing Force, um, at the beginning of Opposing Force, you see a manta ray, manta ray hover over an Osprey and just blow it up into bits. It's really cool. Um, but uh, but that was the manta ray. That's your first encounter with the manta ray, showing that these aliens have evolved to some, some form of flight. Um, this area here is our ultimate goal in, in this part of the chapter. But uh, as you can see, there's mines here. So we're going to have to go this way. And the, and the, the fence blocks our passage. That's locked. And there's another, this is a big pet peeve of mine. I feel this section, this outdoor section of Half-Life 1 is probably the most terribly textured section of Half-Life 1 um, known. I really don't like how all the textures align or, or should I say misalign. Uh, the floor is quite nice and, the, and I guess these walls are like quite nicely aligned, but there's just some terrible, terrible glitches like of, of bad alignment in this whole area. But, that's just me being picky. Let's trip mine there, which we don't want to trip. There's cool sequences, though, with the debris and stuff. Oh, help me. Somebody, please help me. I'm, I'm dying out here. Please help me. So there's a Barney. Uh, poor Barney. The trick is, though, that there's a sniper up in this window, and this is really our first encounter of a sniper in Half-Life 1. There's snipers in Half-Life 2 as well, but uh, they're done in a little bit differently. Actually, they're both mapped in, in editor, in, in, in the, well, the Worldcraft editor for Half-Life 1, but, uh, but the Valve editor and, uh, in Half-Life 2. But, um, but in Half-Life 1, it's a little bit different because it's just like another scripted gun, kind of like the ones that we've already seen before. So if we go out to this Barney to help him, pick up his ammo, the, uh, the sniper will start shooting at us. The best way to get rid of snipers in Half-Life 1 is to AR2. You could throw grenades up there, but in a couple seconds I'll show you why that's not a very good idea. In Half-Life 2, grenades are definitely your best option, but in Half-Life 1, uh, not so much. Okay, so we have to head over to this minefield, or through this minefield, so we're going to do the AR-2 trick again. Then we just sort of uh, explode all the mines with the AR-2. I think there's another one. So there's another sniper up here, and I'll show you why the grenades aren't very a very good idea. So if we just sort of throw it up in there, definitely get it in there, but it doesn't kill him. Um, and the reason for that is, is the sniper nests go very, very deep um, into the back of the brushwork. Whereas in Half-Life 2, they're very shallow, so if you throw a grenade, it's, it's more or less going to land right next to the, the sniper. Um, with the AR-2, you can really just angle it up into the ceiling. There's a black ceiling up there and uh, kill off the, the sniper in there. It's a lot easier with the AR-2. Oh, so this is all electrified. Uh, so we have to destroy the... Uh, the the power generators so that the these two antennae aren't uh, aren't electrified anymore and climb up to the top of this building 
this is where you can really see where the textures are just plain terrible. This whole area just looks really bad. Um, like this texture is just really stretched. None of these are really aligned properly. Um, for example, in that little corner. I mean, this just looks terrible. I don't even know how this passed. It's like some sort of art pass. This is just terrible texturing. I mean, it doesn't really fit with, with valve power. Anyway, um, this is an interesting area. I always thought that there would be a secret in here because if you use like your jumping skills, you can uh, you can actually jump inside these windows, but there's nothing there. I wonder why they didn't add anything cool. It's not hard to get up there, uh, but unfortunately, nope. So we'll head where we're supposed to head, which is down the hole in the ceiling. There's a scientist down there. Hello. You're heading for the Lambda complex, aren't you? I was heading there myself until I wound up here and well, simply lost my nerve. Take one look through that door and you'll see what I mean. I'm just going to wait out the catastrophe in here. If you intend to go on, then I beg of you, proceed with extreme caution. Okay, so this is another uh, stealthy, stealthy Metal Gear Solid section of that there. So you'll immediately notice that there's lots of trip mines, and we're going to be seeing a lot more in a second. Um, but these trip mines are special. Um, special in the way that if you trip them, you will instantly die because the whole complex will explode. And the reason for that is because they will trigger themselves um, and uh, eventually trigger a nuclear warhead, which is being stored inside this uh, facility. So you have to be very careful. You can't blow any of them up. can't shoot them. You have to avoid them. Purely avoid them. And with these boxes, you have to really be careful which ones you destroy and which ones you don't destroy. So here we go. You can see here, there's the nuclear warheads and there's a whole bunch of laser trap mines. And furthermore, there's some headcrabs in here, which you want to get rid of as soon as possible. Because those headcrabs can also trigger trip mines. So it's sort of a it's sort of a jumping puzzle, kind of. Um, but more or less just uh, just try to get this done as safely as humanly possible puzzle. And like I said, you got to be careful which boxes you destroy, because say if we destroy this box, this trip mine will go off. Um, if you push this box into the line, the trip mine will go off. So I've played this, this area countless times, and like I said, and also some of the boxes are linked. So the great way to explain that is this section. There's six boxes here, but if we just break that one, all six break. So some of them are linked, so you really have to know which ones you're breaking and which ones you can break and which ones you can't break. So our goal here is to get down this elevator. Um, so the easiest way to do that, I've already shown you some of the path. You jump down here, come around here, kill the head crabs, um, break this box if you want to trip mine, come around, and then this is sort of a this is a cool cool bit. There's a trip mine on either side of this box, but there's you can try jumping this and you can probably make it. Um, but the easiest way is to just break open these the sides, the whole box won't break. And you can just sort of step through. That's a cool bit. Um, and break this to get it out of the way. And I'm going to move this box preemptively, and you'll see why in a second. But we just sort of move it just like that. That's probably good enough. Maybe a little bit further. you got to be careful not to push it into those drum mines. This is a tricky bit as well. I always save before doing this because I have to run jump over that, just like that. Oh, that was close. Another head crab here, which is probably the most violent head crab in the whole series. Because <laughs> um, he, he sees you almost instantly. Jump over this. And if we trigger this button, this elevator will go up. But if you don't move the box ahead of time, the elevator will go up, the box will trigger this trip mine, and it's game over. So, we've already done that, so we move the elevator. And now we can just step on this box, we're using it as sort of a platform. And bingo, there we go, we're all done. Safe and sound. No harm. Hello. There we go. <laughs> and down the elevator we go. Okay, so we're going to stop this episode here. Thanks for watching. In the next part of Surface Tension, we're going to play the Hunted map. This is this is actually the start here, this bit. This is actually part of a TF2, uh, sorry, a TFC map called the Hunted. Um, but I'll, I'll explain more of that uh, in a little bit. 
So thanks for watching, and uh, tune in to part four.